Okay, the title of the presentation is Meaning, Coding, and Linguistic Analysis of Teacher and Student Topic and Specific Knowledge of Lower Secondary School Mathematics. As I mentioned my, my name, Maria Cruz. So these are the main topics that I'm going to cover in this presentation. I'm going to talk about the purpose of the study, conceptual frame, methodology, including research design, participants, data sources, data analysis, results of teachers and students, and also the discussion and conclusion. So the pioneering work on teacher knowledge was conducted by Schumann in 1986. He focused on teacher knowledge as a major predictor of student learning. Also, there are other scholars that focus on teacher knowledge, like Hill, Bowen, and Skilling, and they propose um, certain categories of teacher knowledge. Like for example, they talk about uh, pedagogical content knowledge, subject matter knowledge, like that. Other scholars um, focus on certain phases of um, teacher knowledge, but we are considering uh, connections, explicitly connections, with students' learning. Also, uh, there are studies that focus on the teacher knowledge and how it impacts on, uh, on teaching, on the teaching of these teachers. And also, there is another line of research that focus on the different types of teacher knowledge and how it's related with student achievement. In this latter line of research is where there is a need uh, to continue making research to know the level of a topic specific connection between teachers and student knowledge. So these are the two research questions that guided our study. One is to what extent are teachers topic specific content knowledge related to student performance? How are teachers mastery of cognitive types of content knowledge associated with a student's topic um, a specific knowledge. So there are um, several frameworks that are proposed uh, by several scholars. Uh, for example, on teacher knowledge, for example, the TEDM uh, SM study, this was a comparative study that involved 17 countries. And they compare the teacher knowledge of press service teachers um, using these three types of knowledge, knowing, applying, and reasoning. Also, there is another study where, uh, in which they develop an instrument called DTAMS. This instrument was designed to measure the teacher knowledge, uh, measuring the memorization, conceptual understanding, and higher learning um, thinking. And also, they measure the pedagogical content in a, as a separate uh, type. So in this study, we focus on the division of fraction. This is the topic of specific content uh, knowledge that we focus. And as you know, this is our main topic on the <coughs> secondary school. This study was conducted in Russia, so in, uh, in, with teachers of sixth grade, students and teachers of sixth grade. And uh, some scholars said that the teachers have limited um, topic specific content knowledge and they lack of concept and understanding of the division of fraction. And the teachers usually use the, the traditional um, type of teaching, the division of fraction, is using the flip and multiply or the cross multiply procedure. And this procedure is not uh, well implemented or used that in, uh, in order that students can understand the meaning of, of this procedure. So uh, the division of fraction, these scholars, Fishman and Simon, have identified two main uh, models for the division of fraction. One is qualitative, that it means um, measurement, and the other is partitive, that is part to whole. But also, um, there's, there's another model that was um, included by Ma in 1999. There, um, this model is about a rectangular area. and it was considered as a category and, co and its name um, product and factors. So then uh, there are might consider three main models that is measurement, is partitive, and product and factors. So this is the research design for this study. So we apply a survey, the teacher content knowledge survey, to measure that teacher content knowledge of these teachers. There were 97 teachers that participated. And then we, uh, we have these criteria to select the teachers for this, for this part of the study. So the teachers should represent the upper and the lower quartiles of the teacher, of the horoscope on the survey, on the teacher content of the survey. Then also these teachers should, uh, must have similar teaching experience, 
similar teaching assignments and also similar school series. So once that we selected two teachers, Irina and Marina, uh, we also uh, we conducted an interview with these teachers and also we work with the students of these two teachers um, where Irina had 29 students and my, Marina had 26 students. With these students we uh, we had a problem solving activity. There were several questions that these students answered. <clears throat> As I mentioned, there were two teachers, Irina and Marina. And then here in this chart, we can see the scores on the teacher content knowledge survey. So Marina got 25 um, answers correct of, uh, out of 33, and Irina only 17. So Marina is located in the uh, upper quartile, where the range of the scores is 24, between 24 and 27, and Irina is in the lower quartile uh, with, the, uh, with the scores range uh, in 13, between 13 and 8. So here we have the questions that we asked on during the interview. You can see the first two questions are focused <coughs> on the pedagogical content knowledge. Uh, the first question is, when you teach fraction division, what are the important procedures and concepts your students should learn? And the second question is, what is the meaning of the division of fraction? Then we have four more questions that focus on the community type of content knowledge. Uh, from these four questions were asked to the teachers, and the last three questions were asked to the students. Uh, so, the, so were the same questions for the students. So the question number three is, what is the fraction division rule? Question number four, um, they were asked to make that division of fraction. Uh, question five, they were asked to construct a word problem using that division fraction of the previous um, question. Number six, they were asked if, if this statement was ever true. I think on number four, it's a type of one, three, fourths divided by one half. Yeah, flip. And we use similar questions, the same questions with the students because we want to trace the linguistic, uh, the procedural, and the conceptual traits with these students to see, and also to see, to analyze non-parametric quantitative association between the teacher and the student uh, topic specific knowledge. So for the data analysis, so we conducted a meaning cutting and a linguistic analysis. The linguistic analysis technique uh, that we used was to identify the teacher and the student use of terminology, of mathematical terminology. And then the meaning cutting uh, was used to analyze the responses of the teachers and the students about the meaning of division of fraction and how also they provide their justifications. <coughs> And also considering the nature of the quantitative data that was categorical nature, so we use a non-parametric technique. Um, when we have two samples, like in this case, for example, we had two groups, the Irina students and um, Marina's students, so it's highly recommended to use a non-parametric technique, like for example, the chi-square that was the, what we use. And this uh, test helped us to identify differences between these two groups using frequency data. So now we let's talk about the results of teachers. <coughs> Here in this chart we can see the performance on the teachers on that teacher content knowledge survey by cognitive type. This is a knowledge of facts and procedures. So we can see that both teachers perform very well with 80 and 90 percent. And then we have the knowledge of concepts and connections. Irina got 46% and Marina 69%. And then here where we have the biggest difference is in the knowledge of facts and um, knowledge of models and generalizations. Irina got 30 and Marina got 70%. So now we move to the interview uh, questions, the answers of these teachers. Question number one was uh, when you teach fraction division, what are important procedures and concepts your students should learn? So Irina, for example, they, she mentioned that students should know factoring polynomial 
fraction multiplication and recover by reciprocals. And she said that these rules, uh, their students should be able to use it in standard um, situations, in standard problems. In, by the other side, my, Marina said that students, in order to know fraction divisions, they need to know about common fractions, mixed fractions, and also to understand how to use the fraction divisions, not only for um, common problems, also for non-routine problems. And also, she mentioned in this part how she wants to engage the students uh, and how they want, she wants to, their students to be working on small groups in classroom discussion. Question number two is uh, what is the meaning of the division of fraction? Here, Irina uh, mentioned that the meaning for the division of fraction is pretty much the whole, um, finding a whole, knowing, knowing its part. That's the, the meaning that she, she said. Marina, she said that fraction division, she said that there are two different meanings, and one of the meanings was the operation, uh, as operation of positive to multiplication, and then she provided an example. And also she said that the other meaning can be like a kind of sorting, and also she provided an example of that. Question number three was, what is the uh, fraction division rule? So as you can see, this question focuses on the knowledge of facts and procedures. Irina said that this fraction rule is just uh, to multiply the first fraction by the reciprocal of the second fraction. That is the procedure uh, cross multiply, is what she said. And we can see that she posted that from the type uh, of knowledge of facts and procedures. And then my Marina, also she said uh, that you need to multiply dividend by the reciprocal of the divisor. And then she provides an example. So here we can see that Marina used this terminology that is more accurate than, than the terminology that Irina used. But we can see that both teacher causes the knowledge of fact and procedures. Question number four, focus further on the procedural knowledge, and the teachers were asked to divide these two fractions. So you can see Aina, yes, solved the problem and that's it. Marina explained step by step what she has to do in order to solve it, and then you can see that she continued using the, term, the accurate terminology for division of fraction. Um, question number five, the teachers were asked to construct a word problem about the previous fraction division. So they already solved the fraction division. Here, Marina, Marina, sorry, Alina, uh, the problem that she constructed was about the area of a rectangle. So she said the area of the rectangle is given by this fraction, one and three um, fourths, quarters. Uh, square centimeters. And then she said that the length is one half. But she already solved the, the fraction division and she knows that the unknown part is seven halves. So she made um, an accurate uh, representation of this rectangle because the, the unknown number is, to be, is greater than this. And then Marina for the uh, Marina construct this word problem. She said an automated machine packs butter in half kilogram bricks. How many bricks can one make up one kilogram and three quarters of kilogram of butter? And she asked if she can draw a picture. So this is the picture that she provided, and you can see that she used different colors. Like for example, for the one and three quarters, she used a, a black color, and then for that one half, a green color, and then she, <coughs> um, she tried to fit this one half in the uh, one and, uh, and three quarters that we have there. And then she realized that the answer is three and a half. Question number six. This question focuses on the knowledge of models and generalizations. So for this question, um, uh, Teachers were provided with this statement and they were asked if it's ever true when A, B, C, A, C, C and D are positive. 
So what Irina said, she said that that statement was wrong because in a fraction division, we multiply the first one, the first fraction, by the second, by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So and then she didn't answer, she didn't solve the question. Marina, on the other side, um, she recognized the, the complexity of this question, and then she solved it. She said, um, in order to solve this problem, a C over B D should be equal to A D over B C. So then she provides a right answer. Here we can see and support the the, the result of the Fisher Content Knowledge Survey because this question was about knowledge of models and generalizations. In the survey, we can see we can see the difference of the scores that they got. And here we can see that yeah, Marina had this type of knowledge and I did not know. Now we move to the result by, uh, of the students of these two teachers. Um, most of the students answer correctly the question, for them is question number one, but, uh, but in the table was question number four. <clears throat> and this question was about to do the, the division of fraction. So 28 out of 29 students didn't try in Irina's group, 25 out of 26 did it correctly in Marina's group, and then in this chart we can see uh, the terms that these students use when they were solving the fraction division. We can see, for example, in Irina's group that they use more this term of flip cross multiply, as we also could see it on the Irina's responses. And then here we can see that there are um, significant differences uh, in the use of dividend and divisor versus first fraction and second fraction in the groups with Marina and Irina. So you can see also the students of Marina use dividend and divisors as she did it also. Then here in this table we can see the frequencies of the meanings used by the students of these two teachers. Eight teachers in Marina's group um, use the measurement and uh, interpretation. And then three students in Marina's group use the uh, finding a whole given part. And only one student used this meaning in Irina's group. Even though Marina's pro uh, Irina said provide this meaning in the question that when we asked we asked her. And we didn't find any significant difference in this compared. Then this other chart uh, shows the frequency of the student responses on the last question, on the, the challenge question about the statement was um, ever true. So these questions, right, this one, you can see that 25 of the 20, out of 29 students of Irina answer with this, and this, this response is incorrect. Only six students of Marina answer um, with this chart that is incorrect. So you can see that it's a significant difference there. Um, we have here these two, um, these two choices that were partially correct. And we have zero for Irina's group and three for Marina's group, one for Irina's group and two for Marina's group. So you can see that only one student in Irina's group answer partially correct the last question. However, this is the, uh, the correct answer. We have eight students in Marina's group who answered correctly. And we can see over there the, um, the significant difference. And also, there were four students in Marina's group that they don't provide any solution versus zero. Yeah. All the students of Marina answered five, uh, answer something, but it was wrong. And then I said that here in this chart, we can see the number of correct answers uh, by each of the questions that were asked to the students. Remember on the, the, on the first table, this was question four, five, and six. So this was about the, just to make the division of fraction.
And then this was to do the construct a work problem, and this question was if the statement was ever true. So you can see that the last question is when we have the significant difference, because only one student partially answered partially correct question three versus 10 students on Marina groups. So uh, let's have some discussion about this um, study. So we can see that Irina and Marina had similar mean scores on the T-shirt and knowledge survey in the part of knowledge of facts and procedures. And also we can see that Marina used, an, uh, used accurate terminology, accurate vocabulary in, in her classes. And because she used the dividend, the divisor, and compared with Irina that she used first fraction, second fraction. And also, uh, this finding could serve as an evidence for the following claim. The accurate use of vocabulary is an effective measure of concept or understanding, according to Murray. Also, we can add to the discussion, um, based on the teacher responses on question two, that was about the meaning of the division of fraction, and also in question five, that was about the word problem that the teacher has to construct. So we can see that Irina and Marina demonstrate to have different understanding about the meaning of the division of fractions. Uh, because, for example, Marina, uh, Irina talked about the part of the whole, and Marina provide uh, their answer about measurement and also their problem, her problem. Uh, and also we can see on the problem in the pictures that these teachers um, draw in Irina's picture that there was a, a wrong representation about the rectangular area. So analyzing also this, the responses of the students, we identified the same similar misconception in one of the students of Irina. So Irina did a wrong uh, visual representation using uh, the area of the of a rectangle. So one of her students did the same thing. So uh, this student uh, provided provide a problem about the area of a, of a land. And also this student already solved the division of fractions and did this um, a representation as an answer square when he knows that the other part that is missing is, is not the same than this one. And she's missing kilometer square, so you don't see the square, right, for the yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah, so said. that's, uh, in a sense, sloppiness, uh, lack of accuracy. In, in And then um, also there is a difference uh, on the way that teachers uh, approach to non-routine questions. For example, Irina said this question, this statement is wrong, and she didn't um, answer. And Marina, she said uh, this is a hard question, but she approached it and she solved it. And <clears throat> Also, we can see some insecurity when Irina was uh, responding questions about the conceptual understanding of the division of fraction. Um, also, uh, we can we could see the difference between the teacher content knowledge survey, teacher content knowledge of Marina and Irina in the conceptual and generalized knowledge, and also. Uh, we have a significant difference in teacher knowledge that was associated to the student performance in the question number three, that was a question about the statement that if it is ever true. That is what I, I already mentioned on the chart. Another insightful, insightful observation was about the blank responses. You remember Marina has uh, for students that didn't provide any response versus students of Irina that everybody answered. But you can see that in Irina's group, everybody was wrong except one that was partially right. Uh, so that's uh, 
Also, we could report the qualitative data collected and analyzed um, from teacher interviews and then from the problem solving questions that students answer. Uh, so we can see that these data support what we found on the teacher content knowledge survey and the quantitative findings. Uh, in the use of this instrument, the teacher content knowledge survey uh, suggests that what a teacher knows is associated with student knowledge in the topic a specific content. In this case, division of fraction. So one of the contributions um, to the field of this study is um, the cognitive types of teacher content knowledge that are connected with a topic specific knowledge are reflected in the problem solving uh, uh, of the teachers and the students. And also about the diversity of meanings and the terms that were used. And then also this study contributes to the body of research on teacher content knowledge, uh, like how it's related to student learning and then how we specify to uh, just a particular topic, like division of fraction. Um, some of the implications, like Stotsky claims that a teacher cannot teach what they don't know. So therefore, the main findings for this study um, encourage teachers to attend professional development where they can be they are prepared on different cognitive types, and like knowledge of facts and procedures, knowledge of concepts and connections, knowledge of models and generalizations. And also the results of this study could be used in designing or structuring um, teacher preparation programs to improve the teacher knowledge uh, about a specific topics that are critical in the mathematics curriculum. Uh, and also this is going to help to improve student topic specific knowledge. So Peter research, um, so in this study we focus on division from a fraction, but also research can be conducted in other topics uh, different from, from these, or in other areas like geometry, um, algebra, and other areas. And also, there is an unresolved question concerned about the association of teacher uh, pedagogical content knowledge and student performance, because as you will see, we focus on teacher content knowledge and student performance. So it would be very interesting to know about teacher pedagogical content knowledge and student performance. And then, as you can see, we use a, a correlational study, the non-parametric uh, technique, um, to, to compare the teacher and student responses, but also a future study could be conducted using a cause and effect relationship between teacher and student topic specific knowledge. Some of the limitations is the sample size in the multiple choice format of the survey. Um, also, the in the qualitative phase, uh, we provide a closer examination of teacher knowledge and understanding its connections to the student knowledge. Uh, in this study, we, con we conducted um, interviews, but also to be very good to conduct some observations. And based on these limitations, we are sensitive enough to not overgeneralize the findings. So conclusions, uh, the main results of this study offer an opportunity to discuss uh, of the importance of the cognitive types of the topic specific teacher knowledge and, their, and its impact on student learning. Also, uh, uh, qualitative analysis of the data of the teacher interviews and student problem solving. So yes, the student knowledge may relate to their teacher's knowledge with regard to meaning expressed in language use. And teacher with a topic specific content knowledge that is connected, conceptual, and generalized could provide a broader spectrum of topic specific learning opportunities for his or her students. Dr. All right, I'll be just uh, 
talking about the process of publication, considering that we have doctoral students in the room, and uh, uh, it was uh, a lengthy process. And um, uh, but we, I think, before we go through the, the, those bullets, um, I would like to thank uh, Kita for presenting. He, he did a very good job. I appreciate that. A couple of technical things, and I, I, uh, the announcement for this uh, Stemmer's presentation was analyzing connections between teacher and student topic specific knowledge of all secondary mathematics. But the title of the presentation was slightly different, right? So we put emphasis on the methods of analysis. When we went through the review process, one of the reviewers actually um, credited us for using a methodology, using the same problems to compare the teaching and student knowledge with the linguistic and meaning coding, right? So that was the reason why the topic of the presentation was different from the one you see in the, in the, in the, uh, in the announcement. The, in the, another, uh, I think, point that we're not including in the presentation that both teachers, Irina and Marina, had uh, teaching history with the groups of students. So they started teaching the same cohorts of students at the grade five, and they were continuing in the grade six where the study was conducted. So there, there, there is a history, the relationship between the same group. There was a little technical uh, episode that I, I have to report. When we submitted um, the two drawings, the two teacher drawings, the Irina's drawing was so black, I think she took a picture with her phone, and we couldn't fix it. So the drawing, if those of you who know my handwriting, was a <laughs> redraw of Marina's picture. Uh, but the idea was uh, just she Tita mentioned that it was fascinating for us to see the same misconception in the teacher work and in the student work, that was fascinating finding. I just said, that itself makes, makes, this, uh, makes this study so, so interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to kind of overgeneralize because uh, in, uh, uh, again, with the limitations, but what is important, a lot of studies on teacher knowledge, the instruments are multiple choice. And when you just apply multiple choice, you could not get a full picture saying, for what is the rationale for a teacher picking a particular response, right? Uh, large studies, and of course, when we talk about large studies, that's the way to collect uh, data to do the uh, quantitative analysis. The Ball Hill study on elementary teachers, I think they, they were able to get a sample of 5,000 teachers tested, elementary teachers. The other study that uh, Tita mentioned um, in Germany, Bomer and his colleagues, they were able to test about, I think, 300 plus teachers. And of course, when you do that type of analysis, the instrument is pretty much multiple choice. So that's where we try to get the qualitative piece, and uh, it's heavily qualitative to kind of make the connection between the the teacher's response on the multiple choice survey, as well as the um, uh, open responses on during the interview, plus the student work, right? That was uh, 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 part of the complexity of the study. And that's where we got beat on the first round of revision. I, uh, we got, uh, as I say, uh, the manuscript was submitted on May 5, 2016. The first response came back uh, what, May, June, July, August, September. Four months later, and uh, it went through two rounds of revision, three reviews, 39 comments. That's where we got punched all over the body saying, how would you <laughs> respond to that? And uh, the revised manuscript, first round, with the major revisions, was submitted back to editors on March the 2017. So they, they gave us enough time to to work on those revisions. The second round of revision was submitted on uh, June the 24th, 17, and then the manuscript was accepted and uh, uh, published 
On July 11, Murat spills day. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then they put the first, uh, the uh, hard copy publication on September 17, the total time from first submission to the hard publication, 16 months. So that, that's, that's pretty much what it involves aside from doing your research. So, and then plus that. Uh, but the journal is a high quality journal. It's uh, on this SGI uh, rating. It comes like uh, quartile one, one journal with the impact factor 0.97. What is impact factor? What does 0.97 means? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fraction that has in the numerator the number of citations of the papers published in the journal. In the, the denominator, the number of papers published, total number of papers published. So they, they collected for two years. And close to one means that, in average, every paper published in that journal at least was cited once. Right? Which means that uh, a good, and what does age index mean? 34. That means that 34 papers of the journal, and they go by two years intervals, were cited 34 times at least. So that means that uh, that tells about the rigor of the review and the publication in the journal. I also want to uh, thank our collaborators in uh, from Kazan Federal University. I think it. We mentioned them in the first slide. Uh, uh, Liliana Shakirawa, she is the department chair of the methodology of mathematics department. Uh, Kadria is the professor in that department. And we also have Yelena Ibrahimo, who is the associate professor at the department of psychology. So they did uh, a lot of field work going to collect the data, going to interview the teachers and students, and help us to uh, do some uh, adaptation of the instrument, along with the translation, several rounds of checking for accuracy of the survey. Plus, uh, they were also very helpful in uh, uh, the analysis uh, process of Right. Any questions? So, uh, among you know the 39 uh, comments from reviewers, so uh, what were some major concerns from reviewers? Oh, that's good. You you have to go back two years. Uh, so, like, uh, <laughs> what uh, what are some things that you struggled the most when you doing your revision? Mm. Okay, the most, do you remember what what, what the major? I think the uh, major ones were the categories of the models. Uh, yeah, the the frame. I think the frame was a major. For some, for some reason, when there is something established in the field, right, and that's pretty much the group of uh, Deborah Ball, Heather Hill, they come with the instrument for measuring the math, the teacher math and knowledge for teaching. Somehow, and that's what you might uh, expect, uh -huh, thank you, Tony, for that. Uh, people do not let you in if you don't follow the mainstream. <coughs> they, would, they would hit us saying, what is that teacher kind of knowledge survey? Why is you proposing something that the field already has the instrument? So it took a lot of time for us to convince that the instrument developed by the group of Ball and Hill are not, are not looking at the cognitive types. So the, the main idea of the study was to look at the cognitive type, to unpack them at the teacher and the student level. And I think we were able to convince because the, 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 there are camps, right? So that as soon as you are not in that camp, you will be beat, <laughs> you will be punched. 
when you're referencing Bob, you're talking about the specialized content knowledge framework that she has. MCAT, uh, MKT, which is the major frame that they use mathematical uh, knowledge for teaching. Mm -hmm. And it's well known in the field of math education mm -hmm. research, well known. So they just keep it under control. It's <laughs> the two instruments that uh, we mentioned uh, uh, done in, I think, uh, teach diagnostic assessment of math and science was done by small grant in, I think, in one of the southern states, Louisiana or something. And it still was published in a practitioner journal. Good instrument, similar to what we have, but again, uh, I haven't seen that instrument used in the larger studies. I was going to say one of the things it says to me too is, and maybe it's a good thing for all the everyone here to recognize is you submit an article, it goes through all these revisions, you get all these comments, and that's actually a really positive thing. You know, a lot of times people sit on stuff because they think, oh, it's going to get beaten up, right? But by putting it out there and getting the comments, in some ways they want your work and you have to, in a sense, convince them and go through that process. So that's just something I think to think about as you're submitting stuff is it's better to push it out and get that feedback. In some ways, it's, it helps to shape your article for their journal and, and helps it to get published. So, I mean, that can look like a daunting thing at first glance, but on another side, it's like, it's, it's, it's how you got in the door. It's the, the, the door was open, you know, which is the, the big deal. So. Yeah, it's, it's a good, uh, uh, I think to get rejected with the comments, it's already a positive step. Right, yeah, because you, you, it leads you on to the next revision and maybe to the next place. Even get rejected with the comments. Sometimes right. they just reject without comments. Yeah. Yeah. Get rejected with comments, that's a good step. Yeah. And great job, both of you. I had one question just about that you, and I, it was early on, and I probably should have said it then, but you're... Um, you had your teacher content knowledge survey given to 97, was it? And then from the 97, is how you chose Iran, Irina and Marina? Or? No, there were from the 97 because they were for secondary school. Uh -huh. so these two teachers were for lower secondary school. So right. There were, I think, 56 teachers from the lower secondary school. Okay. From so, there, where, 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 so the 97 was given to everybody, and then you looked at that set to help to identify the two that you ended up focusing on. Okay. And that was purpose of selection. So we looked at uh, similar teaching assignment. The only discrimination was done by the scores. So we want to just specifically see how teachers performing at the upper quartile and a low quartile, what they do in the classroom. So yeah. that, that, that we didn't uh, initially, when we collected the 97, we look at the data, we try to do some uh, quantitative analysis, and you don't get much. And again, to test 97 teachers, it's a huge job. It's just, you need to go to schools. It's not easy to bring them together in one place. So that, that's where the Russian colleagues, they help to get all that uh, data. Uh, but then when uh, we talk about what makes a knowledgeable teacher compared to less knowledgeable teacher different in a classroom, right? Mm -hmm. That's what matters, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to see how one teacher with the knowledge uh, across the three types compares to a, a teacher with the limited knowledge in some types, right? So what do they do different in the classroom? And how that difference accounts to student learning, yeah. right? So that, that was the, the kind of motivation for, for that study. Mm -hmm. And having that purpose, purpose of selection, and we wanted also to have teachers, as I mentioned, having a history with students. So that without history, you don't know the impact, right? So you, you may say, well, if I got this bunch of students this year, but you didn't have time to impact them, right? And when it comes to linguistic analysis, see how students are parroting teachers. Mm -hmm. They're just parroting a teacher. They would parrot good teacher if teacher used accurate terminology, but they would parrot another teacher using, so to speak, friendly, but not accurate terminology, mm -hmm. right? That's really interesting. Um, yes, 
Um, so you have a first run, that's the one that has a 39 comment? Yeah. And then for the second revision, you still don't know if it's going to get um, published, right? Yeah. You're sure. still doing the work. Um, that's a good point. Uh, because Akeniki is on that project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> we just uh, uh, we have to submit the revision by uh, we went to the first round and we, by September 17 we we, we submitting um, the revision. You, you still don't know. You still don't know. So they might come back and say no. So uh, it depends on how you. I guess convince them. If, uh, I'm myself a reviewer, and sometimes when I reject and then the manuscript comes back, I don't want to say it also depends whether I had en enough sleep that day. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I look how much work, meaning thinking, is put in the paper. I don't, I, uh, sometimes I, I, I read and say, wow, it's like getting rid of just sending back the same. But at other times you see a lot of thinking in the, in, the, in the revision, a lot of attention to detail, a lot of accuracy in reporting, right? And then you, you read and say, oh, that makes a good sense. You make me feel good about supporting it, approving it, so it, 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 it again, that's it. The reviewers have a good night's sleep and you're lucky. <laughs> and Any other questions? Yeah. But uh, just uh, a quick comment. So uh, in, in the beginning, I thought, you know, this study was conducted in the United States. Then you said, you know, the data was from Russia. So I, I just get, you know, uh, you know, a shock that, you know, I, I, because I always thought, you know, uh, Russia, they have the, the best uh, math education in the world. So, but the, the data shows, you know, some teachers there, they still have some uh, knowledge gaps in, in teaching math. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a shock to me from the findings. And if you replicated this study here, do you expect different results? Yeah, we have compared the study uh, with the U.S. and Russian teachers in, uh, um, in the pipe, and I, uh, I don't want to, if that study would uh, get published, then we will probably uh, have another presentation about that. Uh, but going back to Coming soon. <laughs> so, so, Song's observation, uh, the distribution of teachers is pretty much in every place. It's uh, the same. You would you would see strong teachers. You would see not strong teachers, not knowledgeable teachers. Um, the other factor that you you have to consider uh, at the breakup of the Soviet Union. The entire period of the economic as well as political turmoil in the 90s affected the education and the teacher prep as well. Uh, you see decline, and you uh, see decline both on part of the students and teachers, particularly teachers who were uh, prepared maybe in mid-90s and later, so you do see the difference. We did not go into analysis of the how many teachers were from prepared before the breakup or after the breakup. We just looked at the similarity in teaching experiences, right, teaching assignment. But parents usually, when they uh, have a choice to select a teacher, they select a teacher who were prepared during the times of the Soviet Union. So that there is a tendency to rely on those old teachers because the new teachers are not well prepared, unfortunately. Okay. I, I also, you know, curious about the educational system because you you mentioned about you know history, the teaching history. So so uh, so do we have you know uh, elementary school up to sixth grade or we you know 
because the, here, uh, you here, mean you know, the structure? Yes, so you mentioned, you know, the, the other teachers of, of the sixth grade, and you, you mentioned yeah. that they, they also taught the fifth grade before, so, so, um, do they move with their students every year? Did you say they, they have that, a history? That's, I think, uh, uh, Tita mentioned also. In Russia, they have a system of teacher prep slightly different than uh, in, in the United States. So the elementary school goes similar to what we have, one through four. But then from fifth grade to 11th, they only have 11th grade. That's the secondary teacher preparation. They don't break it un, uh, into uh, middle and high school. So they, they just name it low secondary and upper secondary, right? The teachers who are prepared to teach from the fifth grade to 11, those are teachers who teach mathematics and the teaching assignment could be done teaching the fifth grade and 11th grade. I'm just exaggerating, right? So uh, we were... Um, when we say the same teaching assignment, both in case of Irina and Marina, we were looking at the teachers who teach the low secondary grades. Because you might have a teacher with the assignment spread dramatically, like teaching the fifth grade and teaching 11th grade calculus. So that, that's the case. So following Bill's <laughs> we, we are past our time, um, yeah. and, and most of the STEM faculty are here, So and we have another meeting. <laughs> so we bring our quorum. So maybe they need to come here. But we thank all of you very much. Make sure you have your email address. Um, again, Stimbers is a space for uh, resources and for sharing.